Peace everyone, Unmaskart here, and welcome to another live pastel tutorial. Uh, we are going to be doing the paws of our puppy that we've been working on for the past week. And uh, before we do that, I'm going to share a few pieces of work that you guys have shared with me. And to just do a quick little uh, critique of a few of the pieces that you sent me. So let's go ahead and have a look at the first image. So the first one here is done by Christine. She submitted this over there, over in the Unmask Art Family Facebook group. Um, I will do these critiques uh, fairly regular uh, for the live streams. So if you would like some of your work to be critiqued, um, then make sure you head over to the Facebook family. I have a link for that in the description. Uh, this one is really, really good. I'm not sure uh, what I could critique about it. Uh, there was a few things, uh, very, very minor. It's it's a wonderful piece, and you're really you're really making me have to nitpick here. Um, but what I would like to see in this is a little bit of the blue that you used in the background, uh, incorporated into the fur of the dog. Uh, I can tell that you know the the photograph didn't have a blue background and uh, because of that the dog kind of doesn't uh, feel like he belongs all that much so if you take some of the blues the turquoises that you used in the background and just add kind of like a really subtle undertone to some of the highlights kind of where the highlights transition into the black fur then i think the dog will fit into the image just a little bit nicer. Uh, the other thing that I could probably point out is just uh, some of the blurry fur down beneath the head. You know, you don't want to draw a lot of attention to that fur because you really want the viewer to be focused on that bright ball and the cute uh, face of the dog. Um, what I would do is soften some of the texture down at the bottom. Uh, based on what I was able to see from the photograph, it just looks like it could be worked out a little bit smoother uh, down at the bottom. Not bringing in more detail, but actually softening it and getting rid of any of the the sharp lines that you kind of see where the, the colors separate from one another. But other than that, fantastic image. Christine, you did a wonderful job. I really love the, uh, the compliment of the orange ball in the turquoise that is my favorite color combination so uh, yes very very lovely the next one here is from mariola and i believe she did this with luminance colored pencils if i am identifying those pencils correctly off to the left side uh, this is a, another very lovely drawing that was submitted and um, I love it. I love the facial expression. I love the colors that you used. What I would have liked to see is just working the fur just a little bit more uh, to, to make the viewer focus on something very specific, uh, maybe around the eye. Uh, I feel like some of the shadows could be darkened just a bit around the mouth and around the eye to just help draw attention to that. I really like how you went softer around the edges and you made it kind of uh, look like a drawing around the edges and then it gets real more realistic towards the center, the focal point. I really love that. Uh, I like to do that in my own work as well. Um, the other thing is uh, I feel like some of the white parts of the fur, uh, especially around the eye on the ear and right below the ear, uh, f they just feel a little bit uh, too bright and I, I the, I'm imagining that the fur is I, I didn't have a reference photo for this uh, to look at but I imagine that the fur is rather bright looking in the reference photo um, but there's two ways to get white fur to look brighter you can either darken the fur around it or you can just make it whiter um, in this case I would kind of think that um, uh, it would it would benefit the overall drawing if the fur around the the white fur was just darker in general, um, it just so the image pops off the paper a little bit more. But other than that, uh, obviously the drawing is very accurate and um, the fur texture is really great. You did a good job at identifying the uh, different lengths of the fur, especially around the nose and then underneath behind the ear, how it gets longer. Um, 
your pencil stroke uh, direction and length looks very clean and very nice. So well done. Uh, the next drawing here is from Joy, and I believe this is a graphite pencil uh, drawing here, and uh, it's very accurate. Uh, she had the reference photo attached to it. Um, if you want to look at that, you can uh, check it out over on the uh, Facebook group. And uh, this this drawing is very good. The, the reference photo has a black backdrop, and drawing white fur on white paper is no no way easy. Uh, so well done on uh, tackling that uh, difficulty. Um, I think that this this image would benefit if you darken in the background because it would really make the cat pop out. Right now you're seeing uh, the viewer kind of focuses on the eye and the collar and I'm not sure you want the viewer to to be distracted by the collar as much as as much as I seem to be when I look at this image because the, the collar is kind of stealing the show a little bit from the eye. Um, but the details are really nice, really delicate, um, certainly not an easy easy picture to uh, draw. So uh, the other thing that you could do if you don't add the dark backdrop is darken the fur. Um, white fur is very tricky. Um, but I noticed from the reference photo that the, the contrast in your drawing is not quite up to par with the reference photo. And I would suggest uh, darkening the spots in the ears a little bit, darkening that fur. Um, the shadow underneath the eye right there, right by the corner of the mouth, should also be darker. Um, but uh, overall, you're doing really well with it. I'm not sure if uh, this is a finished piece or not, but keep, uh, keep, keep at it. Looks really nice. Uh, the next one is from Tatiana, and I I like this piece just because it is on tan paper with the Prismacolor Very Thins. Um, you, I don't know if you got this idea from me, Tatiana, but uh, I love I love the combination of the browns, the blacks, and the whites on the tan paper. It's like one of my all time favorites. Uh, and I, I love I love the uh, composition of this piece. the The lens that it looked like took the photograph of this this individual uh, looks uh, like a really wide angle lens that kind of gives it that distorted, like stretched out kind of uh, bulbous shape to the image. But it adds a really nice, fun character to this portrait. Um, and I would say like the accuracy of the drawing is spot on. It looks fantastic. Uh, you have good contrast overall, but I think you can even take it farther. Uh, if you're only using the very thin pencils, maybe perhaps grab more of the heavier wax-based blacks and really deepen those shadows around the collar of the shirt and maybe even the glasses. The glasses do look fine, by the way. Um, and then also in the the uh, pupils of the eyes and then I want you to take the white and really boost those highlights in the skin really strengthen the three-dimensional look of the skin if you have to take your reference photo and transfer it into a black and white image boost up the contrast a little bit and then try to match that contrast level uh, because I think the skin right now is kind of matching the background uh, the color of the paper just a little bit too much so I think if you take your whites and just boost them up a little bit more in the skin it will really make this portrait pop off the page and then if you um, if you want you can do what I like to do and uh, outline the uh, portrait with white. I really like to do that. I think it just makes it really pop off the page. You can do it in white or black. Both work really great. But uh, the drawing is fantastic. Keep up the awesome work and thank you for sharing. The next one here is from Linda and if I'm not mistaken this is a pastel piece. Um, I'm not entirely sure what uh, the the procedure was for this one to create that kind of almost magnified look it, it almost looks like uh, like the, and the image was flat and then there was like this magnified circle in the middle of some uh, flowers and uh, the other thing the paper I'm, I'm not sure which paper you're using on but I think I can see 
uh, the texture of the paper, which uh, leads me to believe that it's not the pastel mat or sanded paper. Um, in which case, the, some of the paper seems to be showing through. So what you could do to improve this is just layer more of your color. Really cover up that paper, and that's going to give you that more polished look, um, a more finished artwork kind of uh, look to, to the piece. Uh, because I can kind of see the paper texture showing through. I can still see some of the white of the paper showing through. And if you just um, continue layering with your colors, you'll 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 notice that your your artwork just looks better overall uh, as you cover the paper more and more thoroughly. Uh, the other thing that you can do is uh, heighten your contrast a little bit. So I imagine that behind the flowers uh, in those darker, like you have this dark grayish color, uh, I imagine that that's fairly close to black. And what you can do is you can layer some black and some green so you keep it uh, the color harmony to the piece overall, but if you heighten your contrast a little bit, I think you'll be able to um, convince your viewer uh, better as to what you're trying to display here, which I believe is flowers. All right, next, uh, this is the final image here, and this one is from Jason. Uh, and for many of you, this this uh, piece will probably look rather familiar because I know a lot of you have taken my intro to pastel course and I believe this is po project three if I'm not mistaken it's been a while since I looked at the course but uh, uh, this this might be project three and uh, the only thing is the deer isn't uh, in there yet I'm not sure if you plan on adding the deer Jason but I have to say that I really really like the improvement that you did with the grass I know that you asked me over in the Facebook group um, how to you know make the grass look a little bit better and I think you did a really well a really good job at, at, at changing the, the depth um, your grass looks a little bit longer than what I had originally did in the in the project, but I think it looks really cool, and I love the uh, the variety of colors that you added for the flowers, the little flowers you sprinkled out uh, about the grass. I think it looks really nice. Your tree is filling up the page wonderfully. It looks it, it captures the the emotion and and the feel of the original project really well. And uh, I have to say that I, I think I like your clouds better than mine uh, when I did the project. So uh, excellent work, Jason, and uh, keep it up. I can't wait to see more of, of your work from the, from the course. All right, that is it for the uh, critiques. Thank you so much to everyone that sent, uh, sent in the pictures for me to critique. Uh, hopefully I gave you some helpful insight and uh, gave you some, some motivation. Uh, to, and, and now we're going to start with uh, the puppy project. But before I do that, let me say hello to a few people. Um, uh, I think that's Alana, Fritz, uh, welcome, Jeff, uh, Alicia, Sneaks, uh, Frances, Fra Fran Francis. <laughs> wow, that was, yeah, Francis, uh, Chrissy, uh, Barb and Barbara, and Robin. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Uh, very, very glad to see you here. Uh, and yes, Jeff, I did officially hit 40,000 subscribers over the weekend. Uh, so thank you all so much for the support um, and the continued support. Uh, it's It's been a, a very long journey, but uh, amazing. And uh, I'm very glad that uh, you are all here to be a part of that. Um, so today we're going to be working on the pause, so I'm just going to move my drawing up a little bit here and zoom in a tiny, tiny bit so you guys can see where I'm working. Oh, thank you, Ankush, uh, or thank you, Robin, and hello, Ankush, <laughs> and uh, Shiny. Let's see. Let me grab my... Uh, first color and we're going to do the we're going to do the same procedure that we've been doing so far. I'm going to grab my light highlight color here which I've rubbed off. I think it's 103. I, I still can't tell whether it's 103 or 105, but it's one of those colors. It's it's the lighter color. Uh, hello Cheryl. First time catching the live stream. That is awesome. So glad you were able to make it. Yeah, I, I kind of scheduled this one a little bit late, but uh, I had mentioned that I was going to be doing it next last week, so 
uh, hopefully a few of you were able to remember. <laughs> but I'm glad that you were able to catch, a, catch one for the first time. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. You know me, I love questions and I never get enough of them. So I'm just gonna block in some of the highlighted areas of the fur here before moving on to some of the darker colors. And the focus of today's tutorial is gonna be mainly on the paws. Uh, this part of the leg here, the hind leg here, is very, very similar to uh, all the other parts that we've been working on. It's all about uh, the direction that the fur is going and just mapping out all the kind of muscle structure and anatomy uh, based on the reference photo and then also maintaining a dis disciplined pencil stroke for the direction of the fur and mapping all that out. I hope everybody had a lovely weekend. Uh, it's been rather cold here in Poland, so hopefully you had some nice weather too. It was uh, a bit rainy and rather cold. It's actually, it feels really cold today too. Um, it was raining a bit and um, very, very cold. But it was still a nice weekend. Uh, new to pastels, thanks for the tutorials. Well, it is my pleasure, Beverly. Thank you for uh, coming by and, and saying that. Uh, you've downloaded a few pictures of wood fire and camping fire. Uh, would you like to do something on that theme with pastels sometimes? Uh, yeah, that would be really cool. You know, I've fire is um, fire is a unique subject. It is a very unique subject, and I think that uh, that would make a really really nice tutorial. So if you uh, if Ankush if you want, you can send me a few pictures over on Facebook, and I'd be happy to take a look at them. Uh, and I don't currently have another pastel project uh, planned for the live demonstrations. So if you guys uh, if you guys ever have any suggestions, you know I'm always open to suggestions. Can't guarantee I, I will do all of them because I get so many suggestions. Uh, but I will do my best and uh, try to pick the ones that I think I think I haven't quite covered enough. Yeah, but fire is, yeah, fire does sound like a, a fun one. A, a very interesting project, at least. All right, let's uh, fill in the rest of this leg here a little bit. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was still summer as well, but it feels it feels closer and closer to winter uh, this past this past week for sure. Oh, hello Susie from England. That is awesome. Thank you for uh, tuning into the live stream. So glad you were able to come. So I'm going to do a, a little, a minimal work on the paws right now. I kind of want to finish the, the fur going into the paws before diving into uh, coloring in, co coloring in the paws, uh, just so I can leave those uh, to more specified part of the uh, live stream. So I'm just going to basically just work in the colors of the fur really quickly. Um, and then focus on the pause once I'm able to get there. All right, uh, the next color I'm using is 685. And for those of you that uh, don't know, I'm using Carbothello pencils on Claire Fontaine Pastel Mat. And I do have links for these uh, products in the video description, along with my intro to pastel course. Um, I have several courses on my website. Many of you are already aware of those. Um, but for those of you that are new to live streams and perhaps new to my channel, um, since I did just hit over 40,000 the, over the weekend, that's uh, nearly 200 more, two or 300 more subscribers uh, in the past uh, few days. So I kind of have to keep, keep saying the same stuff over and over again for the new subscribers. If you are a new subscriber, let me know in the uh, chat. I'd love to say hello. 
Um, is my internet slow or is the stream lagging? Mine keeps pausing too. Let me check the stream. Um, I think it might be your internet. Uh, my On my st status here, it says that it is uh, good, but let me just uh, check my settings really quick. I apologize for the lag. Uh, it is an unfortunate part of streaming, uh, and sometimes it is rather troublesome. Uh, I have, I am, I am just so prone to the technical difficulties that uh, it is very, very unfortunate. So, so over on YouTube, it says that my stream health is good. So that means um, the stream should be should be uploading rather well. Um, I changed my my bit rate. Uh, I lowered it just a bit to see if that helps. And hopefully hopefully that will make uh, the stream run a little bit smoother. But let me know if there's any other problems. Um, I'm just double checking the stream constantly right now. It seems to be getting better. Okay. All right. I am going to continue uh, coloring the fur in while that uh, tries to correct itself a little bit. Hopefully the stream will get better. Every once in a while I just have the hardest time with the stream, uh, but hopefully today won't be too bad. Uh, how about we all try a common theme on any medium of choice for next Monday's art feature on your stream? Oh, that would be really, really cool. Uh, I will make a post. Uh, I will make a post in the uh, the Facebook group. Uh, but if you guys want to throw out some ideas for an art theme that we could all kind of do together, and then. Uh, we could work on it uh, this week, and or you guys could work on it this week, and uh, send it uh, or post it, post it in the Unmask Art family, and then on Monday I could share everybody's work and kind of do some critiques on them, and 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 then I would do a, like a, a live tutorial of, of the theme or something along those lines, uh, or just a drawing journal, and we just hang out and and do whatever. But uh, yeah, that sounds like that sounds like a fun idea. So if you guys want to throw out some ideas for a project or a, a theme, um, good morning, Susan. Uh, which colored pencils are the best to use? The Pablo's, the Halben, Faber Castell, or Prismacolors? Well, I am a personal fan of the Prismacolor Premieres. Uh, those are kind of my go-to pencils for a lot of, of projects, and I really, really enjoy working with them, despite their, um, the popularity and dismissing those pencils and kind of complaining about the quality of them. It seems to be uh, an unspoken sport to uh, talk about how bad Prismacolors are and how poor the quality is, but... Um, I've been using Prismacolors for a very, very long time, and uh, even though I struggle sometimes uh, to get them sharpened the way that I want them to be sharpened, uh, I, I find them to still be one of my all-time favorite pencils. Oh, hello, uh, Lady Marigold. Good morning to you. Always a pleasure having you on the stream, so thank you. For coming. All right, I'm going to switch up colors here, get some variety in my fur. Uh, I'm going to use 680 now and just start uh, adding more layers. It 
still life could be a good theme. Yeah, I always enjoy doing still life, that's for sure. Still life, there, there's a reason that uh, still life is, is among one of the, the most popular kind of subjects uh, for artists, and that is because still life offers a lot of technical practice. Uh, what brand do I recommend for soft pastels? So the brands that I like to use are the Fabric Castell soft pastels. Those are probably still one of my favorite pastels to work with. I the the only problem I have with them uh, in the location that I live is that I don't have access to buying them as individual sticks. So when I buy them in in a pack of twenty four or forty eight or however large. Um, if I run out of one color, I cannot just get that one color. I have to buy a whole nother pack of them. And then I'm, I'm left with like 10 colors that I never touch because I don't, don't use them for anything or I just haven't used them for anything yet. And, uh, so I, I still like them. I think they're really great for, for starting out. But uh, I need I need to find a, a set of color or a, of pastels that uh, allows me to um, buy individual ones. And there's there's so many really great brands of pastels that you almost can't go wrong, regardless of which one you choose. But I do I do like the uh, pastel uh, the fabric pastel soft pastel squares. Um, I'm a big fan of the shape of them. Uh, some come in cylinders and some come in like square shapes, uh, rectangular prisms, and I I like those ones. Uh, I like those shapes better because of the sharp edges, it gives you some extra control. Um, do 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 do. Let's see, did I miss anything? Uh, I prefer moving life, uh, even slow moving life, like a model or an animal, a hot model or an animal. Yeah, I, you know, I, I really enjoy uh, drawing life as well. Uh, not so much animals. I, I really, really enjoy drawing people. I love drawing people. Um, the human form is probably one of my all-time favorite subjects. Um, there's just... I don't know what it is about it, but uh, just capturing uh, human life uh, is just so appealing to me. But uh, still life, uh, still life, as I was saying, still life is just a really, really great subject to uh, practice your technical skills, uh, working it with contrast, working with bright colors, working with composition. Um, the the flexibility that you have when it comes to drawing an apple or a pear or something like that, um, it it allows you to focus more on the uh, technical side of art, like I was saying, the colors, the contrast, the lighting, the composition. It allows you to work on that stuff without having to be extremely accurate with your drawing skills, uh, because when you're doing a human or an animal, uh, just about everybody knows what a dog looks like. Just about everybody has an idea of what, uh, I don't know, an elephant looks like or a bear or a tiger or something like that. So if you get something anatomically incorrect in your drawing, a lot of people, regardless of their uh, skill level in art, are going to be able to identify uh, the mistakes that you make. However, when you draw uh, a still life like an apple or uh, an onion or anything along those lines, um, those, those objects, they can sometimes come in weird, awkward shapes. So your drawing no longer has to be as perfectly accurate anatomically because, um, because even if your apple looks a little short, uh, everybody's seen or is there there it's believable that there is a shorter apple out there or uh, a less round apple or um, a slightly square cherry a few of you will know what I'm referring to when I'm saying square cherries but um, yeah so uh, there's yeah the the 
the still life is is just great for kind of working on those those very basic technical skills in art which always makes it a good a good practice piece i've drawn several still lifes my sister lisa uh, loves all the fruit and veggies and things that i have done in the past and she uh, she collects all of them and hangs them up in her kitchen so she has all my still life drawings all right I'm gonna grab a gray now and this gray is 700 and I'm gonna use this to kind of fill in the rest of the fur and just give uh, give it a nice base layer uh, to cover up the paper here before incorporating some of my other colors. Still, even though I'm using it to just fill in this space, I am still going to pay attention to the pencil stroke, the direction the fur is, is going. Because you kind of have this uh, weird bunching up for, I guess it's, sort of like a knee. I don't know what you would call this part of the dog, this joint here, um, hip area. Uh, you have the fur kind of coming over like this, and then uh, on the leg it's wrapping around. So the fur actually changes direction here quite drastically. So I'm just mapping out those lines. Have, uh, has anyone ever tried using soft pastels on heavy watercolor paper? Uh, I haven't personally, but uh, maybe maybe somebody else has in the chat. I, you know, I, based on my experience with pastels, I can't, I, I can almost confidently say that it wouldn't work very well. Uh, someone wants me to copy do a copy of a painted art piece that has really strong bright colors. Is there any brand or any way to get really strong bright colors with pastel or color pencil? Well, with pastel it'd be easy uh, because pastel colors are very bright. They're very bright, they're opaque, um, and they can mimic um, they can they can mimic like those vibrant colors that you see in oil paintings and things. Uh, very very well with colored pencils however um, you know the the really bright vibrant colors come in the polychromos set uh, they they tend to have the really saturated the colors that uh, you know I, I don't I don't use much of but that would be that would be a good option uh, switching back to the 680 color, I'm just going to continue adding in some fur lines, continue adding some subtle details into the texture of the fur. As I continue mapping out the uh, anatomy here on the back leg. Hey CC, uh, it's been nice uh, that you've been able to catch my live stream so often. So soft pastels work very good on the 300 GSM paper, watercolor paper. That is, uh, that is interesting. I see. I would have uh, thought that it wouldn't work very well, simply because the the limitation in in the paper texture. But uh, I do, I do have some watercolor paper that I could always try the pastels on to see how it works. Hello from France. Well, hello, Chris from France. Thank you for uh, coming into the live stream. Uh, this next color here is the Ninja Purple. This is the 642. And just start 
incorporating some of this into the fur. Uh, the fur down here is a little bit grayer, a little bit uh, browner than the uh, fur on the body as it's kind of in a cast shadow and has some, it has some subtle purples coming through it. Nice break from regular routine, yeah. Uh, a, a break from the regular routine is always nice, yeah, for sure. add quite a bit of this purple into the fur and then I can use some of the more orange colors to make it more brown because orange orange if uh, you don't know is red and yellow and yellow is the complement to purple and when you mix the complement of two colors together they make brown the secret to making things look gold is mixing yellow and purple. That's how you get a really nice uh, brown for your uh, shadows uh, on golden objects. So that can be uh, that can be applied to a golden retriever, making the fur look more golden. And let's see. I'm going to grab some dark brown now, and this is six three five, and I'm just going to add some of the darker spots to the fur, a few of the uh, deeper shadows before doing a bit of blending. Grab my blending stump in a moment and smooth out some of this fur and that will be kind of the base layer. Uh, which brand of pastels or pastel pencils would you say is has the brightest colors? Uh, pastel pencils and um, I mean the the uh, Carbothello set of pastel pencils. You you really just can't go wrong with it. Uh, what is the longest piece of art that I've ever did? Uh, ten weeks. the The longest project I ever worked on was ten weeks, um, and I have a video of it. I have a video of it. If you go to my channel and you look up, how am I forgetting the name of it right now? CC, help me out here. <laughs> you know the name of it. Um, wow, it's it's one of my few paintings that I did a time lapse of. Beneath the veil. Yes, that's it. Beneath the veil. So if you go to my my channel page and you type in beneath the veil. Um, you'll see a time lapse of, of a painting that took me 10 weeks. Um, and I'm just including the, the time uh, that it took me to actually paint it and not do the planning process because I actually planned it for about four months, but part of that planning process was also recording the time lapse uh, because it's one of my more, um, my more uh, advanced videography type uh, work that I did in the past as far as my time lapses go. I haven't, I haven't done many new time lapse videos that uh, I kind of show off my uh, videography and editing skills. Uh, I haven't done any of those recently. I do miss doing that. But between the all the live streams that I kind of do, it's it, I don't really have time anymore to sit down for um, nine hours in a day to record a time lapse. And I, I never did really like um, doing doing time lapses over a span of more than a day. So I always like to do my, my projects um, just in a single day, sitting a single sitting. So it, it, even if that requires me sitting and drawing for 15 straight hours, which I've certainly done. No stranger to uh, to those those long creative days, but uh, 
I don't feel like I can do that anymore. All right, I'm gonna grab some brighter orange here, some of the 620, um, and kind of work right over that uh, darker color, bring back some of the orange of the fur. Uh, journal is more enjoyable than the time lapse for me. Without them, I wouldn't have made so many new friends. Yeah, I really like I really I really like doing the live streams. Um, I agree with you. I I feel like uh, I've made a lot of really great friends doing the live streams. And uh, uh, even though I don't feel like the live streams have been the most beneficial type of video that I that I produce. Um, for the growth of my channel, um, I'm not uh, I'm not chasing subscribers. Um, if I if I was chasing subscribers, you know, I, I'd I'd probably uh, I'd probably name my videos something different, um, and I'd probably be producing very mediocre content, uh, and uh, you know, using using bold capital letters in all of my titles, um, and really uh really obnoxious thumbnails <laughs> but i i i can't do that um I, I i would never be able to do that to myself let alone you uh all of you lovely people uh, you deserve you deserve better uh better content than uh than that so i i steer clear from i steer clear from the uh the clickbait art videos um, and even though that might uh, cost me a, a few thousand new potential subscribers, uh, I find it worth. Uh, I, I find it worth uh, still maintaining my integrity. So uh, you can do time lapses of your Patreon and course pieces. Well, yes, I do have. Um, seven things to avoid <laughs> yeah yeah um i do have the time lapses of my pastel uh projects and you know i've oh goodness i i, I i've completely forgotten until just now but i have the time lapse for my new course uh, my my color pencil portrait course i have the time lapse for that that i still want to do uh, i've just been rather lazy about it uh, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, richer reddish brown. This is 640 uh, into the fur. I, I know I said that I was going to uh, blend out after that one, that last layer here, but I don't feel like I quite have the colors the way that I want them. So I'm going to continue uh, adding colors until I feel like I have it just the way I want it, even if it looks a little rough right now. And uh, this this uh, leg over here needs to be much much darker. And this is the color that I feel like it's missing. There, um, and underneath the tail, some of this darker color to. Place the shadow. Uh, I'm not sure about buying some pan pastels. Um, well, I've used pan pastels a few times, uh, but that's it. Uh, I have a full set of them. They were generously given to me uh, by a very lovely subscriber. And um, I am still very grateful for that. But I just don't use them very much. And uh, it, it, uh, every time the, the subject of pan pastels come up, it makes me feel bad because they're not cheap. They're not a cheap product, but I just, I, I just don't use them as much as, uh, as, much as I, I would, would like to. Um, I find, I find that the pastel work that I enjoy doing is stuff like this, kind of small. This, this project here is not very big, 
but I feel like I've gravitated towards using the pencils even more than the soft pastels, uh, just because I like the control that I have, I like the detail I can get, and I just really enjoy working with the pencils. Uh, now I'm using my, my blending stump here to smooth out the fur before adding any more layers. And just like my pencil direction, my blending direction is also going to be in the direction that the fur is going. Just like all the rest of the puppy that we did. Pencil direction, blending direction, it's all very important. Hello, Ko. Always a, always a pleasure. It's been a while since I've seen you. Glad you were able to make, a, make it to a live stream again. Uh, what sharpener do I use for pastel pencils? So what I've been using is my Helix um, pencil sharpener. Let's see if I can... Yeah, this, this pencil sharpener here. Uh, however, it hasn't been it hasn't been very it hasn't been very good uh, the past the past uh, few weeks, and uh, what I've reverted to is just using an exacto knife. I really like the exacto knife paired with the sandpaper blocks. Uh, these sandpaper blocks are extremely cheap. This one just happens to be Faber Castell. They're they're extremely cheap. And what I do, uh, I'm going to try to not make a mess. So I have this blue pencil here, and you can see uh, that it's fairly chopped down. Uh, so it's very simple. Uh, you take your, your craft knife, you place it on the wood where you want it, and then you just press in with your thumb. You see my finger. Uh, I, just, I just press in with my thumb to dig into the wood. And then I chip away at the wood and I get this nice long stick. And then I use the sandpaper and I just sharpen the tip the way that I want. And this, this requires a lot less actual sharpening once you do it and you get this nice long stick. Um, and then you can just use the sandpaper over and over again uh, to uh, get the sharp tip. And the best part is uh, I used this color right over top of this color here and then this this uh, particular sandpaper block has this nice little sponge to clean the tip of your colors off uh, which you can see I've used quite regularly um, I've really enjoyed doing it this way um, you would think that it takes longer to sharpen the pencil than if you had a really wonderful pencil sharpener that you could just shove the pencil into and it'd come out magically sharpened um, but uh, considering the risk of breaking the tips off in normal color, uh, in, in normal pencil sharpeners, uh, I've found that uh, just using the craft knife and a sanding block has significantly shortened the time I spend sharpening pencils. Uh, but the Helix still works really great with the Prismacolors and the uh, Polychromos and the Luminance colored pencils. And uh, I am back to blending now. Yes. So a, a good question about the pencil sharpener. It's you know when I first got the Helix pencil sharpener, it it sharpened my my pastel pencils just flawlessly. And every every live stream that I was doing and um, using the pastel pencils, and I was using the sharpener. Uh, during the live stream, I was always saying how much I loved the pencil sharpener because it worked so well, and then it just stopped working. And uh, all it does is kind of break the tips off, and it doesn't get anything sharp anymore. It still gets the colored pencils, but not the pastel pencils. And I even tried sharpening it with a full graphite pencil, um, but it just doesn't. 
it just doesn't want to work anymore with the pastel pencils. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about buying a new pencil sharpener to try out, but um, yeah, I think I found the way that I'm going to stick to. Uh, I think I'm just going to use the craft knife and uh, stay old school with it, make it easier on myself. Because some of the really good pencil sharpeners are, are rather expensive, especially when you have to have them shipped from the UK. Not too bad when it's shipped from Germany, but uh, it, I feel like it's a lot easier to find what I'm looking for if I get it in the U get it from the UK. Uh, but uh, anytime I look at what I can get from Germany, it's not uh, nearly a, the wide selection that I'd hope for. All right, I'm going to grab a little bit more gray here, if I can find the pencil, and uh, just continue continue layering. Uh, this gray is the 700, by the way. Cover up some of the fur, get those highlights where I want them. Uh, what blending stump do I use? Uh, it's just, it's, there's literally nothing special about it. It's just one of those paper, uh, those paper blending stumps that you often use with graphite. Uh, this one actually, I believe, comes in the set of uh, Carbothello pencils. Yeah, so it seems like a few of you uh, can relate to my, my, pencil sharpener issues with the with the pastel pencils. Yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, it was working really, really well. I absolutely loved it and then it just kind of died out on me and now it doesn't want to do anything. Now it now it's just protesting. It's just protesting and doesn't wanna doesn't want to work anymore. Just wants to complain every time I try to give it a pastel pencil. It's like, nope, I'm gonna break it. Don't give it to me. Like uh, I let's let's do a test run. Okay, so the um, I'm gonna let's see here. I'm gonna take that graphite pencil here. Uh, I'm gonna break it really quick. That was loud. Um, I'm gonna do a quick sharpen with the the graphite pencil. So I broke the tip off. Sharpen it really quick. That's okay. For some reason, it didn't want to do anything. It's still kind of crusty on the tip. Um, let's set that aside, and I'm going to grab, let's see here. Let's try to sharpen something that I don't use very often. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to sharpen this green pencil, because I've barely ever used it. Let's just uh, put it in the pencil sharpener, see how this goes. It, fe it felt like it worked really, really well. It felt like it worked really, really well, but it broke the tip off. So it literally did nothing. It did nothing. Trying to make sure I have the tip of that pencil out. It appears as though it's out. Yeah. So it's it's good now. 
There's nothing in there. I had to take it apart. See, this is why this is why it's just faster uh, to use my X-Acto knife and the sandpaper because I don't have to take my X-Acto knife and my sandpaper apart every time. Um, every time a, t a tip breaks off and I've never I've yet I have yet to break a tip sharpening with an exacto knife right. let's try this green pencil one more time uh, I can't find any pastel pencils that I can afford uh, well what is your budget because uh, the full set of Carbothello pencils um, well depending on where you live uh, should only cost about sixty seventy dollars maybe maybe eighty at the most okay it's it felt really smooth it felt really smooth look at that Broke the entire thing off. Broke the entire thing off. Yeah. It just doesn't work. It just it refuses to work. It refuses to work. I can fiddle around with it all day long, and I'd never get that pencil sharpened. Or I could just grab my X-Acto knife and my sandpaper and do it in 15 seconds. About the same... It, it takes about as much time to sharpen it with the X-Acto knife and sandpaper as it would to sharpen it with uh, a pencil sharpener that works. Uh, maybe I could find a replacement blade for it. Uh, I looked. I looked everywhere. The the I, I could not, for the life of me, find um, a replacement blade for that particular pencil sharpener, unfortunately. All right, I'm going to grab uh, kind of a uh, grayish brown. This is the 625. Add some more fur texture in here. I, I want to get to these paws before too long, so I'm going to speed along a little bit this uh, this area of the drawing but not not too much I'm going to do just a little bit more blending with my blending stump and then we can get to the paws. I'll probably uh, do a little bit of work off camera uh, on this fur to finish it up, but uh, this, this project already took longer than I anticipated, so I'm just going to move this drawing one more time. Right, right here. Let me just focus the camera one real quick as well. Focus right there on the pause. So one of the one of the biggest mistakes that uh, people make with pause is that they try they try to draw the pause the way that uh, they think they should look. When in reality, if you just ignore what your mind says pause look like and instead draw exactly what you see in the reference photo even if when you look closely at your uh, reference photo and you look at the paw and you're like okay when I look at the reference photo it looks like a paw 
it looks like what I would think a paw looks like. Um, and you try to translate it over and for some reason it starts looking different. That is because you are not drawing what you see in the reference photo. You're, you're, you're trying to translate what you perceive to be as a paw and you force your drawing to start looking like a paw. So when, uh, when I do, when I do paws, uh, I like to look at the darkest shapes first. So I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit on my reference photo here. So I like to look at the darkest shapes first. And commonly, the, the dark shapes come from the, the pads of the foot and the fingernails, uh, or the nails. I guess they're not fingernails. Um, but uh, let's let's start on this back paw here. the The first shape that I see, the first dark shape that I see, is the finger, the the nail, the nail right here, and then it kind of comes down into a triangle shape like this, and that's it. There's nothing else to the paw in that area. It has the nail, and then it has this triangle shape, and that's all I would do for that for blocking in that shape. We're not dealing with any of the fur. We're not dealing with the separation of the little fingers or anything like that. Uh, because what what people would generally do is they'd uh, they'd be like, oh well there's you know there's this whole finger there. And so they draw this like line back uh, to put the the finger or the digit, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that is where your mind tricks you. Uh, because that gap there doesn't happen with a line. It happens with the colors of the fur. So I'm going to uh, pretend I didn't do that. And I'm going to go on to the next dark shape that I see. The next dark shape is just another nail. So it has a small nail here. And then it has kind of another kind of uh, more obtuse uh, triangle shape kind of like this for the pad. So that's the second pad right there. And all I did was add black. The, the next shape that I see is actually both a, a pad fingernail and a shadow of this back paw onto the paw in front of it. So I see that uh, the next pad is a little bit smaller, kind of comes up like this with the nail. And then there's a separation and a shadow onto the paw next to it, just like that. So it doesn't look like much right now. Um, it, uh, honestly, if you, were to, if you were to isolate that drawing right there and show it to somebody, odds are they wouldn't know you're drawing the paw of a puppy. Uh, the next paw is a little bit different. It only has a little bit of a nail, like right here and another little nail right next to it, like that, two tiny little triangles. And then the next nail actually sticks out a little bit farther, kind of like a triangle sticking out like that. So very, very simple. The, uh, the last paw that you can see here just has a few, uh, few of the pads showing down at the bottom in combination with a bit of shadow, drop shadow. And then back here, another pad and another nail. Not really making any obvious shape, just kind of like that. Very, um, very simple. Basically just a few little black shapes. And I did use black for that. And that's it. Just I just blackened in those dark, very, very clear shapes of the paws. And the next thing that I'm going to do is start adding in the fur. And I kind of did that. I have base base layer with uh, most of my colors here. Uh, this is that 103 color. I'm just adding a few pencil strokes here and there for a nice base layer. Let's, uh, let's grab a an orange brown. Uh, I think I'm going to give this a quick sharpen. Let's let's see how long it takes to sharpen this pencil with an exacto knife. I don't expect you to count the seconds.
Maybe you could race me. You could take a pencil of your own and sharpen it with a, uh, a pencil sharpener and see who gets done faster. There it is. Nice, uh, nice tip. And I'm going to come in here to this paw and I'm going to start adding in some of the, uh, the little fur details. The fur on the paw is much shorter than the rest of the dog. And it goes a lot of different directions. Just kind of fill that in like that. This is where the shape, the shape of the uh, paw really starts to come together when you start adding in the colors. I'm not drawing the fingers or the digits uh, the way my mind would perceive them. I'm ignoring, I'm ignoring the fact that I'm even drawing a paw. Uh, all I'm focused on is the shapes the colors are making and the direction that the fur is going based on those shapes. And as you do this more and more, you'll, you'll start to see that it just becomes a paw. Oh, hello, Wicked Illusioned. Yes, thank you very much for, uh, for that. Uh, did reach 40,000 subscribers. Very, very excited about it. Despite the way my voice sounds, I can assure you I am excited. <laughs> I have a hard time expressing excitement in my voice. So I, 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 have to, I have to verbally say I am excited and then reassure you that I actually am and I'm not just saying it to say it. That's, that's the downside of having a voice like mine. Uh, many, people, many people compliment the sound of my voice and they say that uh, they enjoy listening to it. Uh, but the downside of having a voice like mine is that... Uh, you actually have to convince people when you're excited because you can't actually ever sound excited. That and my voice doesn't carry very well. Uh, that's another problem. That's another problem I have or I've had a lot of uh, in school and, and, and such um, when I had to speak up and uh, front of class or or read uh, out loud for the class. Oh gosh, that was just a nightmare every single time Let me check my stream um, Yeah, YouTube YouTube's not being very friendly with my live stream today uh, seems the the connection is not uh, all that all that good for me. It says my stream status is okay rather than good. So you, you may experience a bit of uh, slowness if you're watching this live. Yeah, public, public speaking was, it, it was always really hard, not necessarily because I was nervous to talk, um, but because I knew that it was only going to take half a second for the teacher to be like, oh, can, can, you, can you speak up a little bit? Can, can, you, can you speak louder? Um, and then me having to try to convince them that, no, this is as loud as my voice goes. If you want to listen to it, just listen carefully. Um, I actually had, I, I think, it, I, I forget which class it was. It was one of the classes that I took um, in college or whatever. And, uh, we had, we had to talk a lot right, in the class. I, I, it, I don't think it was a public speaking class. I'm almost certain of that, but, um, oh, it was interpersonal communication. That's what it was. It was even weirder. It was even weirder of a class than public speaking. Um, and, uh, it was just a constant battle with the teacher when she was like, oh, can you, can you speak a little bit louder? No, lady, I've, I've been in this class for 10 weeks now. You know I can't. Stop asking. Um, it's, it's been a constant thing throughout 
my schooling all the way back from the very beginning. I have to go. Okay, Chrissy. Well, you have a lovely evening. Thank you for stopping by. Always appreciate your company. And by the way, we got to do a live stream together sometime again. It's been it's been too long. It's been a it's been a year or something close to that since we did a stream together. So we got to do another one. I got I got to do another um, uh, subscriber hangout live stream. That was a that was a super fun one. I did it with uh, Michael and Chrissy last year. All right, I'm gonna switch to my gray. Um, I'm gonna get a sharper tip on that really quick. That is a very nice tip on the pencil. And I didn't have to worry about it breaking either. Just another benefit of using sandpaper. All right, Chrissy. Just doing a quick softening of the texture here on the paw. Adding some more gray. I haven't added too many colors yet. Just uh, that base color, that orange color, this gray, which is 700. I need a bit of a darker color. Um, I don't think red. So uh, let's go with Ninja Purple. I'm going to do a tiny bit of sharpening on this pencil as well. I'm almost running out of this pencil. Good thing I have an extra one. I use this pencil pretty much, pretty much every pastel piece I've ever done. I've used this pencil. Uh, this is the uh, 642. All right, I'm just going to come in here and start adding a few more deeper pencil strokes uh, into the texture of the fur. And even onto the pads, uh, I don't want those pads to be just flat black. If uh, you add a bit of color to them, they'll just look a little bit more natural. Into that shadow there as well. That shadow isn't actually black, it's more of a, a purplish color. Uh, do pictures look more real using pastels or using color pencils blending with paint thinner? Um, actually, Susan, it's all the way up. It's 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 all up to the artist. Um, you know, if it it just depends on the time that you put into the piece. Uh, you can make photorealistic pieces with pastels or with colored pencils. Um, both are totally doable. You just gotta. You just got to learn the techniques and master the craft and then put in the time. If you uh, just 
pay attention to the colors, you get the contrast right, the lighting, and the color selection, uh, then you are on your way to creating a very realistic pastel or color, pe uh, color pencil pieces. The medium, the medium makes uh, very, very little um, changes in how, how real you can get. I mean, people, people can do like super realistic watercolor painting. That, I, I haven't tried watercolors uh, yet in my lifetime, um, but uh, I know that they're not, they're not an easy medium. They're about as friendly as ink and uh, yeah, uh, getting getting some realistic work with the with the watercolors. Uh, just some of the pieces, watercolor pieces that I've seen, uh, just blow my mind. Uh, they make me want to try out watercolors, but at the same time, they make me want to quit being an artist because some of the some of the work is just so amazing. Uh, this color here is the 635, just going in and darkening up some of the texture. You're learning watercolors, they're hard, they're also addictive. Yeah, I can I can imagine that they're they're rather fun to work with. I, I've always really enjoyed um, the pieces, the watercolor pieces that incorporate ink and uh, kind of like a really loose, a really loose style with the watercolors in general. Like uh, the ink drawing is just kind of thrown down really quickly, like cityscapes and um, whatnot. And, uh, even even though the, the, it's drawings of uh, buildings and architecture, the lines are not straight. No ruler was used, and they're just really, uh, just really loose style. Um, I've always really enjoyed those those watercolor pieces um, with the the ink lining. Um, it's just a, a really cool style. It looks really nice, and uh, the colors that. Uh, and the texture that watercolors makes uh, was always really cool looking as well. All right, let's move this drawing down a little bit. Let's have a look at our puppy. Is that really all the farther I can zoom out? Just making sure everything's in focus. There. Yeah, so I'm gonna do the collar. I'm gonna do the collar really quick, um, and I'm gonna do a base color in blue. And the reason I'm choosing blue for the collar here is because uh, blue is the complement to this orange, and I thought that that would look really nice. So I'm literally just going to fill in the collar blue to start off. I think the rough the reference photo actually has like a greenish brown collar, um, which doesn't look nice at all. So I'm gonna start with this blue color, nice bright blue collar, to just set it off. And then I'll use some of my fur color that I used in the fur to add the shadows and the highlights and whatnot uh, to maintain the color harmony. And then I'll add a, a quick drop shadow to the puppy. Love the contrast. Just a flat blue to start off the collar with. Just 
Just taking my time so that the line is nice and straight and solid. There we go. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, my darkest brown, uh, which I think, yeah, I think is going to be this brown here. Uh, and this is the 635. And I'm just going to come into the collar, color right over top of it, and add a bit of a shadow. I might uh, incorporate some black here and just give the, give the collar a little bit of dimension. A little bit of cast shadow under here, perhaps. Underneath the chin right there. There. The, the color change is subtle, which is exactly what you want. And then I have this lighter blue, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of a highlight to the collar right here, maybe a bit of uh, obvious lines to create some texture, cross hatch it a bit just to create a little touch of texture. Uh, maybe a little bit of a highlight on this side too, just like that. There we go. And then I'm gonna have to sharpen this gray. Uh, I'm gonna use the gray for the bone shape to tag. So I have a nice sharp point there. And I'm just gonna come in here and color in the entire tag with the exception of the edges. I'm gonna leave the edges white because this is going to be a metal tag. And the edges generally will do a lot of reflection. And now add a slightly darker gray to make the rest of the tag look shiny and then a touch of light blue as well for some reflection, and then also some color of the fur. So let's uh, start with a, a touch of light blue uh, around the tops, kind of like it's reflecting the sky. So just a little bit of light blue like that. Uh, I'm gonna grab this darker slightly darker gray. This is 720. Let's see if this is dark enough. And just do like kind of underneath. That might not be dark enough. Yeah, that's not quite dark enough. So I'm going to go even darker. This charcoal gray. This is uh, 708. And I'm going to just do dots, really small dots. Because I, I barely want to add any of this color. Just a touch of this around the edges on the bottom. And I'll do the same thing with, uh, let's see, maybe, maybe this tan color. I'm going to sharpen it really quick. Uh, this tan color here is the 620, and I'm just going to add a little bit of it in here. It's going to create just a tiny bit of contrast around the edges. And I'm going to use my blending stump and just tap it to soften those colors. All right, grab the dark gray again and do some of the details around the hole. Grab the light gray. I'm going to color in this ring here. Color in the ring. Uh, the top part will be cast shadow. The lower part will be a cast shadow. Mostly be dark gray here. And touch of white if I have it somewhere. Let's add a 
bright highlight there and a little bit of a highlight there and then just smooth out those colors with the blending stump nothing uh, nothing too fancy with the collar I think I'm gonna add a little bit of dark brown right underneath of it to get it to stand off the fur a bit that way it fits into the uh, picture a little bit better around the uh, the rings here underneath the collar right there there now it fits now it fits on the dog a little bit more naturally and the last thing I'm gonna do here is is add the drop shadow and oh you're taking the uh, course Kimberly well I am glad you are having fun with it that is awesome Uh, I'm going to start with the dark gray, the 708, and I'm going to actually outline a little bit on the bottom part of him here, all the way around. Get that nice separation between the subject and the shadow. So I'm just going to kind of outline him like this, starting off. Over here, and I'm going to thin out as I get to the tip of the tail where the shadow stops. and. Then I'm going to sketch in how I want my shadow to look. So I think, I think I'll have the shadow starting about, about here. It's just going to fade away to the edge of the paper. Kind of like this. So a soft light, soft shadow. Little bit right there. Uh, I'm going to incorporate a bit of blue. So I'm going to grab the blue here and do a bit of blue. This will help the shadow contrast with the orange as well. All, all the orange that's in the fur. So a bit of blue, touch blue down here. Uh, I'm going to take the lighter gray. Where's it at? Here it is. This is the um, 720. Oh, by the way, that blue I used is 400. So I'm going to use this lighter gray, 720. Extend the shadow out a little bit more. Cover up the paper. grab that dark gray again make sure I have the paper covered up around the edge of him and let's add let's add some more blue I want that blue to show through so I'm gonna add a bit more of it. You can experiment with the colors that you choose. And I'm gonna grab the lighter blue, the 435, around the edges here. And let's grab the blending stump and just smooth out the shadow. I don't know, just pull the shadow out. Until the pastel runs out, all the way to the edge. And I'm just going to keep rubbing it until it's nice and smooth. I 
I don't want to see any lines in the shadow. And there we have it. So I'm going to just uh, lift this camera up a bit more. All right, so there is our puppy. Um, it's all complete, cast shadow and all. The collar, the, lead, uh, the uh, tag, all the fur, the face, everything. Um, so uh, next week I'll probably start something different, uh, maybe, uh, maybe a still life piece. Um, if you have any suggestions, feel free to, to leave them in the comments or uh, message me over on Facebook. Um, but that is going to be it for today. Uh, thank you all so much for coming by, hanging out with me, and drawing the puppy. I hope that you hope that you learned a lot through this uh, pastel tutorial, this part, this uh, three-part series. Um, and if you enjoyed, if you enjoyed the the live tutorial, the live demonstration, and this uh, this project in general, uh, let me know by giving the video a thumbs up, and I will um, make more of them. And uh, I'll probably do another stream this week. Uh, can't guarantee it, but for sure I'll do one next week. So I hope to see you all there, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.